Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and today I'm going to create a different project. It's uh, going to be a tunnel book and you can see the tunnel book that I have here. This is a, a 6x6 uh, one that I got from Joggles and you can find the link down below. Now as you can see it consists of many pages and there are rings that you can uh, use to bind everything together. The one that I am using today is the 6x6 circular one, but you can get a square one or a rectangle one where all the pages look like frames. And I'm going to work on them as if it was an art journal, so I'm going to use my mixed media techniques that I use on my art journal, and I'm going to create a dimensional scene for winter. So let's get started. So as you can see, all the pages are made out of chipboard and uh, they have craft color, which uh, you can of course embrace and use it as your base. But in my case, I wanted to create a sky. So I'm using chalk paint by Paper Archie and that's uh, opaque color. So uh, it's going to cover up everything at the background. And at the same time, chalk paint has enough tooth. So you don't really need to prepare your pages with gesso before you apply that paint. So here is how it is looking now. I didn't pay any attention on the edges because I'm going to finish them off when I finish the whole book. So you can see that I covered uh, both front and back and I didn't pay any attention at the bottom of the pages because I am planning to create some snow banks right there. So now I'm going to create some depth on my sky and uh, for that I'm going to mix a second color on the sky but this time I'm going uh, to go over the sky with my prayer. The color that I'm using is slightly darker than the background and it's also by Paper Archie. This is a quick and uh, easy technique to add some interest on your pages and uh, you can see how easy it goes. And I'm going to do that on all the pages, front and back. And here is my tunnel book. You can see how it looks at the moment. I really love the depth on the sky. And now I'm going to do some more techniques on them to make it even more interesting. So one of my favorite um, stamps for creating backgrounds is uh, any of this set by Paper Archie that creates a nice interesting um, designs at the background. So I'm going to use the rectangle one. And uh, I'm going to stamp with archival link. I am doing so because archival link is uh, permanent and I'm not sure at this stage what I'm going to do on top. So it's better to be safe than sorry. I am working with a permanent ink, so no matter what I decide to do on top, it's not going to smudge or smear. Now you probably can't see the texture that I get by using this, uh, but I'm going to do a close up. And you can see that the ink that I have chosen is very close to the background, but you can still see the design. I'm going to go over all of those pages to add just a little bit of stamping. Now I'm going with a darker color now, and I'm going to do more stamping with this uh, stamp, which has some text on it. Again, I'm going to go over all of the pages and stamp some in some areas. I am not going to cover up the whole page. And uh, I definitely don't want to have squares of text all over my pages. I want to uh, have some text here and there that looks organic and totally random. And here is how my tunnel book is looking after stamping everything, front and back. And since this is uh, supposed to be a winter scene, I am going to add some snow. My favorite way to add snow that is totally random on my pages is by using gesso. So I am using a little bit of gesso there. I have watered it down and now uh, with a thin brush I am going to tap and create my snow. And again I am going to do the same process for all the pages front and back. And here is how my book is looking at the moment. I am quite happy with how my background looks, so I will go ahead and work on the last page. And this is where I want to create a focal point that you can see through all those circular holes. So I decided to go with this stamp by Tim Holtz. And it's very important to place it in such a way that you can see it through the uh, next hole. So this way the house is going to look as if it is very far at the background. So I am going to use this scrap piece of paper to stamp the little house. And uh, this house uh, comes from this stamp set by Tim Holtz. 
You can find all the links of all the supplies that I used for this project down below in the description area if you are watching on YouTube, as well as on my blog. So I'm using Sepia Archival Ink to stamp the house and uh, I'm only going to use the house at this stage, so I'm going to stamp it and then use my scissors to cut it out. And I need to create a snowbank for my scene, so I'm going to use this die by Lone Phone Landscape Dies and I'm going to cut out a white piece of cardstock. I'm going to stick the snowbank at the very bottom of my page. For that I'm going to use my matte medium, but you can definitely use any type of adhesive that you like. You will see me switching uh, types of adhesives from my ATG gun to my Tombow Mono glue and back to my matte medium, uh, but there is really no right or wrong here. And I'm going to use my scissors to cut out the excess paper. And now my page is ready to add the house on top. So before I stick uh, that uh, little house down, I'm going to do some embossing and I'm going to stamp the trees. So you can see that I'm applying some Versamark ink only at the trees, which I'm going to stamp on top of my paper and then I'm going to apply some white embossing powder. So these trees are going to look as if they are full of snow. And you can see that I used my misty there just to make sure that I have stamped the trees nicely. I am checking out that everything went uh, okay. But even if it didn't, I do have a second chance with misty. So I'm applying my white embossing powder, which I am going to heat set. And now that I have my trees on place, I'm going to apply some uh, uh, matte medium and stick the house where it's supposed to. Now once I stick the house down, notice how I am going to cover it up with matte medium. This is going to turn the house into a non-porous surface, which is going to allow me to do some shading on top of the house. Although you don't really need to do so, I really love using my big brush markers, so I just couldn't help it. Before doing my shading, I am using my white pen there to create a fence there is a fence in the stamp, but as I was stamping it, that fence was falling on top of the snowbank. So I wanted this to be more visible, and that's why I'm doing it all the way on top of the snowbank. And I pretty much followed the design from the stamp. So I am uh, really happy with how my scene is looking at the moment. I am applying some white embossing powder over that uh, pen and you can see uh, like, that uh, it actually sticks uh, there, the embossing powder sticks there, although it was not Versamark ink. But it was still wet, it didn't dry, so I am capable of uh, applying embossing powder and heat set it with my heat gun and now it's looking even more bright and uh, matches my trees perfectly. And now it's time to do some shading. I am using my big brush markers here. This is Indian ink and I have a few seconds to move the ink around. I am smudging it with my fingers and I'm going to use three different markers to add some uh, shadows on my little house. Now if you notice, the scrap paper that I have stamped my house was a manila colored uh, cardstock, so the snow doesn't look on top of the roof, doesn't look as bright as everything else. And uh, that's why I am going to make this look uh, dimensional and uh, more exciting. I am going over it with my embossing pen, which is going to apply some uh, watermark uh, ink on top of that uh, roof. And then I'm going to apply some uh, embossing powder. Now the embossing powder that I am going to work with is by Stampendus and it's a chalky white one which is going to give a nice beautiful uh, design I'm, and texture. Now I'm going to show you how chunky that is. I hope you can see the difference. It's not a fine white powder. I am heat setting my embossing powder with my heat gun and uh, I don't know if you can see how thick that ends up being, but it's really three dimensional. It's the perfect embossing powder for creating snow. I also going to use my crocodile to add the whole bag and uh, now I'm going to do the exact same thing, add a snow bag at the front and at the back of each page. Now make sure that you cut out two identical pieces that you stick mirrored 
one at the front and one at the back. So when you have something stick out from the hole, you are going to cover it up with a bag. This way you won't have anything sticking out that you can see the back of it. I hope that makes sense. I am going to repeat the same process adding a snowbank on all the pages. And here is how my tunnel book is looking at the moment. I think it's lovely and I love how you can see through all those holes the little house at the background. And uh, now it's just a matter of sticking different elements on every page. I decided to go with uh, those trees. These come from uh, different dyes by Simon Says Stamp that I have cut out plenty of times. And I'm going to stick them on uh, the right and on the, and on the left side of my pages. Now I also made sure to cut uh, duplicates of those uh, trees because I am going to stick one at the back as well. So I'm going to show you exactly how I do that. This is where I am using my Xyron machine to make um, to turn those die cuts into stickers. So I'm going to stick one there and another taller tree just next to it. And I really don't mind if something is sticking out from the hole. Actually, this is exactly what I want because this is going to add even more to the depth of that tunnel book. So I'm turning the page at the back and I'm going to make sure that I align those die cuts. So basically the front at the back is a mirrored image. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with the bigger tree. And you can see how my page is looking front and back. Now I plan to keep my tunnel book quite simple, so I am only going to add uh, those trees in different pages and only a couple of deer. I have those dies by Penny Black, a bigger and a smaller one, but you can definitely go ahead and add as many elements as you like picking through those uh, holes on your tunnel book. So you can go ahead and add polar bears or penguins or really whatever you feel it uh, matches your scene. So I'm uh, going to cover everything with glimmer paste. This is by Tonic Studios and it's actually glitter paint and uh, glitter paste. And I have um, chosen the silver color which uh, matches perfectly a winter scene. So you can see how I cover up everything. This is a great way to add glitter because it's going to stick nicely on top of your elements. And once it's dry, it's not going to go all over the place, uh, no matter how much you rub over those elements. Notice how I have die cut two images from every die and that's because I need to have a mirrored image so that I can cover up the back of that uh, element. Now all the elements usually stick uh, out from the window and you can see them at the back. You don't want to see the ugly back, you definitely need something to cover it up. Now an easy way to do that is to use die cuts uh, because with the die you can cut out both ways. You can also use images that you find online that is easy to flip and print in both ways and there are also available in the market uh, collage papers with mirrored images printed on top. Now I have all my elements ready and it's just a matter of sticking everything on a different page. This way I am going to create a nice depth on my scene. So on the second page I am going to stick the big deer. On the third page I'm going to stick the smaller one and on the, the other pages I'm going to stick uh, different trees on the left or on the right side of the pages. I'm going to put on some music and uh, speed up the process so that you can see how everything came together.
And here is how my book is looking at the moment. Now I can add the rings. And uh, this is where I remember that I haven't finished the edges of my book. So you can see how they are looking at the moment. And I am going to use my Picket Fence by Tim Holtz. This is the Distress Paint. And I'm going to use the dabber to go all over the edges. And this is going to give it a nice finished look. So I can add the rings now. And I'm going to flip through all the pages so that you can see how it's looking. I'm really happy with this project. I had lots of fun creating it and I can see many of those tunnel books in my future. So that was the project for today. I hope you had fun and got inspired. And if you did, don't forget to leave me a comment as well as give me a thumbs up on my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching.